Good evening. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm Lauren Noble, the founder and executive director of the Buckley Institute. <laughs> Welcome to our 13th annual conference. This year, we're recognizing the 75th anniversary of Richard Weaver's Ideas Have Consequences. We were thrilled to have such a stimulating series of panel discussions this afternoon. Please join me in, all, in thanking all of our speakers for their contributions to this special event. I also want to thank New York Times columnist Brett Stevens for joining us as our keynote speaker tonight. Brett was one of Buckley's first speakers when we were just getting started in our first semester in early 2011. In the time since, he won a Pulitzer Prize for commentary, became editor-in-chief of a new journal, and has been conservative at the New York Times for an outstanding uh, six years without getting canceled. <laughs> The reality is that with Ross Douthat and a couple of others, the New York Times commentary team has more intellectual diversity than Yale's departments of history, political science, philosophy, and economics combined. <laughs> Though that's not saying much. The Buckley Institute has grown a lot since our humble beginnings. And that's as a result of the tremendous support from alumni and those concerned not only about Yale's future, but America's future. It's because of all of you that we are here today. So to all of our generous supporters, both in this room and around the country, thank you so much for making everything we do possible. Our student leadership team is instrumental in making all of this work. From promoting our events on campus to making sure they go off without a hitch, thank you. And a, and a special thank you to Ryan Gapsky and Libby Snowden, who have been dedicated champions of our cause on campus. Thank you very much to the Buckley Institute's Board of Directors who help us succeed in all of our endeavors. Many thanks to the Buckley Institute's staff for their hard work every day in making sure this conference and all of our efforts throughout the year a success. And last, but certainly not least, uh, thank you to my incredible husband, Nick, for always being my number one supporter. It's important to always remember where you started and to recognize that building something often takes many hands, not just your own. In many cases, as Weaver argues, our lives are shaped not only by people who influence us, but also by ideas that arise long before any of us are born. What's clear is that on campuses, for years now, bad ideas have proliferated. Truth is no longer the highest pursuit. Instead, America's higher education system is focused on shoring up progressive orthodoxies ignoring basic common sense in favor of oppress and oppressor dichotomies. The last few months have shown some of the consequences of such bad ideas. On Yale's campus, such thinking can lead a professor to defend mass murder, rape, and hostage taking, and prompt student groups to celebrate these atrocities. It's telling that some universities have suddenly become vanguards of free speech after, all, after years of punishing those who challenge the campus monoculture. As our keynote speaker put it recently, 
Free speech is fine as a standard, not as a double standard. At Buckley, we know firsthand the consequences bad ideas have on our college campuses. According to our eighth national student survey, more students support shoutdowns than oppose them. 45% of students agree that violence can be justified to stop hate speech. Our just released Yale student survey found that the numbers at Yale are slightly better. Nearly one third fewer support shoutdowns than nationally, less than half as many students endorse violence to stop hate speech. While there's still more work to do, the Buckley Institute is making an impact. And while bad ideas seem to rule campus, the Buckley Institute was founded precisely to give good ideas a fighting chance. As an undergraduate, I realized that my fellow students and I wanted to hear perspectives that were outside the campus mainstream. So I started Buckley as a, speaker, a simple speaker series. Here we are a decade later. Last spring, we hit a record of 623 Buckley Fellows. We bring students to Washington, D.C. to meet Supreme Court justices, current and former government officials, journalists, and more. We hold weekly events that bring real intellectual diversity to campus. We debate controversial subjects, and we give students tools to turn their ide good ideas into a better future. Through our new Lux Averitas Leadership Program, we give select students an opportunity to study the fundamental ideas that built this nation and equip them to advance those ideas as they lead in the boardroom, the courtroom, and Congress. Our Fight for Yale's future effort to reform Yale has taken the lead in pushing for free speech in the Yale presidential search. The challenge before us is how to stay focused without slipping into a kind of cynical complacency. Our keynote speaker wrote in a recent column that in the CIA headquarters, there was a sign that read, every day is September 12th. Every day, the CIA agents should take their task of protecting the United States as seriously as they did on the day after the largest terror attack in American history. He exhorted America's Jewish community to do the same with October 8th. Yes, October 8th, the day after Hamas's terror attack in Israel. It was the day students and professors on college campuses, people in the streets, celebrated. It was the day universities, quick to condemn the affirmative action decision and the invasion of Ukraine and support Black Lives Matter, failed to condemn what happened in Israel unequivocally. This was a wake-up call about the state of America's universities. Those who waved away concerns about cancel culture and campus conformity realized what exactly had been brought about by these ideas. Being right has rarely been more bittersweet. And while it was difficult to watch campuses devolve, we also realized our strength. Universities realized that there could be consequences for the hate their policies have allowed to fester. University presidents have been called to account for the intellectual environment on their campuses. Alumni are responding to anti-Semitism and terrorist sympathy on campus by closing their wallets to their alma maters. The universities are scrambling, belatedly, to be on the right side. So to each of you who care about free speech on campus, always remember October 8th. Remember when the campus culture was revealed for what it was. Remember how alumni and donors said enough. And remember how America's universities had no choice but to respond. Yes, bad ideas have bad consequences. But make no mistake, good ideas have good ones too. Thank you very much, and please enjoy the evening.
Thank you, Lauren, and good evening, everyone. I'm Ryan Gabsky, the student president of the Buckley Institute. Thank you very much for being here with us tonight. This conference has been sort of bittersweet for me. I have been delighted to hear so many excellent panels and to see so many of the good friends I've made over the years in one place. But it has also occurred to me that the sun is setting on my term as president. I am incredibly proud of what the Buckley Institute and this year's student board in particular have accomplished. In the spring semester, you've just heard, we had an all-time high of 623 Buckley Student Fellows. We, ha <laughs> we hosted fantastic events and continue to serve as a space on campus where students can speak their minds without worrying about getting ostracized for taking stances not in line with Yale's progressive orthodoxies. But as I reflect on my involvement with Buckley, even more significant has been its impact on me personally. When I became a Buckley Fellow my freshman year, I was a confused directed studies student without any idea what I wanted the work of my life to be. In the years since, I have been able to work through the questions that have defined my college experience with support from the friends and speakers I've met through Buckley. Reading the Gorgias with Dr. Ben's story, discussing Adam Smith with Ryan Hanley, and talking about the relationship between liberty and virtue with Peter Berkowitz. These are the kinds of things I came to Yale to study, the kind of exploration I was disappointed to find missing from my undergraduate curriculum. While I care a great deal about ideas, I wasn't sure how to make those ideas a part of my life, even after Yale. Thanks to the Buckley Institute, I've realized that I can maintain my love for the humanities and, at the same time, pursue a career that advances the values I cherish, whether in grad school or through other political avenues. Events like our lecture with Secretary Brad Raffensperger and panel discussion with Judges James C. Ho and Elizabeth Branch have breathed life into my hope for the future. In fact, it has been meeting like-minded students and speakers like John Durham, James Ho, and Bill Barr that has made me certain that I want the work of my life to involve politics and government. So this means that my political outlook has been shaped by Buckley. I've met some of my best friends through Buckley, and I believe I've found my vocation through Buckley. Yes, for me, the close of this semester's programming is bittersweet, but really, I'm just so grateful to all the student fellows, to Lauren Noble, and especially to all the supporters and donors of the Buckley Institute who made all this possible. It is you all who are holding out strong and ensuring that Yale University still stands for light and truth. Thank you.